What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Daily here from Nation Fusion. And today, the codec returns after being on hiatus for over a year. We thank you guys for joining us today. And we're coming back with an awesome dual interview for you. We've got Stephanie Houston. How are you doing? Hi, I'm doing good. great. Thank you. Thank you for returning. And one of the most kind of fan favorite interviews we've ever had, Donna Burke and her yeah. hat. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is the scoop. We've got some information on the cat that we're going to share with you guys today. Donna, thank you for taking time to join us. We know it's late there. Well, actually, thank you, Archie. Yeah. <laughs> it, it wouldn't be possible without Archie. So, Archie, thank you. Sponsored um, by Archie. Right? <laughs> and uh, as you can see, we've got returning co-host, Yong Yeah. Welcome. It is so good to be back. It's amazing to see you guys all again. Kept you waiting, huh? That kind of thing. <laughs> He Seriously, went, it's... It's already three <laughs> seconds and he went there. Please <laughs> line, Young. Okay, what is that? Stephanie. I thought and we Stephanie... were... That was Stephanie's line. I can <laughs> okay. just stop. Let's just start the whole interview. Again. Break, yeah, breaking, breaking the script, man. Breaking the script. <laughs> well, no, but I, it's... I, uh, yeah, it, it's amazing to be back. I uh, can't wait for this interview and catch up with everyone years right yeah a few yeah. years it's kind of crazy it's been uh it's been a few years since we've done an interview with each of you and it's been uh over a year since our show the codec has actually done an interview um young like we mentioned just moved um, ronan's pursuing some stuff with twitch and uh, i joined the police academy so we've all been really really busy that's awesome wow yeah it's, it's... <laughs> Can <I do> <laughs> Okay, later. later. That's, okay. that's how we do it in America. Um, no, everything is uh, everything is awesome. It's it's been real fun to kind of get the um, the hype back for doing an interview. I forgot what that was like, like scheduling this, setting it up, and um, and everything. So it's super fun. We have some stuff to talk about today. There's a new song out. We're going to talk about that in just a little bit. But um, first, I'd like to turn it over to Yong. He he wants to kind of um, you know lead this interview off with what you guys have been up to. So Yong, if you want to take yeah, a look. Yeah, it's been. Uh... Because it's been a while since our last interview, I figured we should all kind of sound off what we have been up to. I know, Donna, you've obviously been pursuing your musical endeavors even further. And Stephanie, I've seen a couple projects you've been involved in, from indie films to various games. So talk to us a bit about what that's all about and uh, where what we should look forward to. Right, we should start. You go first. <laughs> okay. Um, well, yeah, after... Um... The Phantom Pain came out. Um, I, I, I got quite some opportunities to yeah. uh, work on films uh, abroad because at the time I was still in Japan. Um, now I'm back, based in the Netherlands, and uh, I got to pe be part of a Dutch film called Hostage X, um, yes. and it's actually released in the United States and Japan. So oh, really? It's really exciting. Um, right, and also I've been in a, in a Japanese feature film called Alessandra and the Fitter, uh, and um, recently in a Dutch historical film called The Road of Repentance. Um, so that's really cool to be able to start working on films, and yeah. also I'm uh, voice acting for a few video games. Um, Space Lords and uh, Last Labyrinth are coming up this year. Right. And uh, also an animation uh, animation series from Chile, and um, that will I will start working on that later this year. So it's it's quite ahead, but yeah, it's, Space uh, it's Lords, been very exciting. Yeah, there's a character named Suma that I saw like on That's Twitter. Right. In it Space looks Lords. a lot like you. Right. Yeah. It's again, it's a character based on on what I look like, so that's really exciting. But it, it's it's awesome, so different yeah. from Quiet, so it's yeah. cool to get a nice variety of characters. <laughs> much more aggressive, much more battle ready. And then right. last Labyrinth, um, you s you sang the this the song in the trailer, which sounds yeah, very beautiful, right. by I got the to way. Sing the theme song. Yeah. And then you play you you voice act as uh, the female character. Is that correct? Yes, it's a, a little girl called Katia. Mm -hmm. And um, Last Labyrinth is a VR game. Um, so um, the player is actually bound to a wheelchair and you're really restricted in um, your movements. And mm -hmm. uh, this girl Katia, she's there to help you out. And um, by communicating with her, you can solve the puzzles and mysteries of 
of the world of Last Labyrinth. Interesting. And are these games, as Space Lords is, it, that's been out for a while and your character is a new addition, yes? That's right, yeah. And then Last Labyrinth, is that out yet or...? No, it'll come out, um, it's scheduled to come out um, in October, November-ish. <laughs> but yeah. as you know, like game development, it, it can take it its time. For so sure. And we'll for have the... to wait a bit for a, an actual yeah, sure. release date. And for the films you're involved in, how do we uh, check those out? Because um, I saw the trailer for the Dutch the kind of... Um, the, the, the... Is it a fantasy or is it like a medieval set realistic? It's a medieval setting, but it, it's mm. um it's an actual um it's it's an actual um story mm. that actually happened in the past. Oh, it's a historical, um, I see. Right. And it's um now being taken to various uh film festivals. Uh the production team just went to Cannes with it, so mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it'll be distributed amongst those festivals. And then Hostage X, just you said it came out in the U.S. And uh, <laughs> I think in the trailer I saw you with a sniper, which I thought was uh, <laughs> right. I great. felt a little bit typecasted in that one, but <laughs> it was still a lot of fun to work on. Awesome, awesome. And Donna, tell us a bit about what you've been up to. Well, actually, I have a sort of question for Stephanie. The, the historical drama, what year is it in? Um, it's... Oh God, <laughs> I'm not, I don't know time. the exact years, but I know. Like it's in the Second World War, or is it? No, no, no. no. It's it's like medieval times, so it's um I believe it was around 1600. So you're gonna look a bit like uh you're gonna be look a bit um Game of Thrones. <laughs> Kinda, you could. Well, shoot, yeah. I want to see that. Yeah, yeah I can the, show you a trailer. The costumes yeah. look pretty good, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the setting's really well created. And no, yeah, you did a great job. No, it's not going to be typecast. <laughs> or maybe you've got, you've got a crossbow. Um, no, I don't feel typecasted in that one. It's yeah, um, yeah. quite awesome. different. Oh, good. <laughs> Sorry, Young. Oh, I'm no, just, please. Uh, jump in and you'll uh, see if I can sort of, you know, <laughs> make the interview by asking questions. No, by any means, please. Uh, please tell us a bit about your endeavors now, Donna. What have you been up to since the release of Phantom Pain? Well, this morning I cut um, I cut one of my cat's toenails. Um, <laughs> I did two loads of washing yesterday, and uh, uh -huh. I'll be announcing that later. <clears throat> Duke, I've been mm -hmm. washing. Um, what have I been doing? Um, the Metal Gear and concert's been fantastic. And yeah, that, that little thing. It was awesome to have uh, Stephanie in Tokyo. We did two concerts in one day. Two. Really? Yeah. It was, it was awesome. Wow. That's did crazy. that put a strain or was that, was that smooth a, sailing? It, yes, it did. But that's another story. Um, <laughs> there was a, she, the worst of it all, she had a bigger dress than me. Um, <laughs> Massively, so I didn't. Oh, I never thought right. um, until she turns around. She's got this massive train. It was awesome. It was really fun. We got to hang out with lots of fans in between the concerts. Yeah. And um, and, and um, what else have we? I've been doing. Oh, I'll, I'll remember. Oh, I've got something coming up that I can't. It's going to be announced at E3. So. Ooh. Oh, uh, all right. Else, something else, mm -hmm. which I can't say. But it will be. It's, I'm really excited. So your uh, name's going to pop up, and we're going to know it's Donna Burke. You will, and I can't say any more than that. Otherwise, sure. my NDA will be shot. All right, no, something what? to look forward to. I like that. Yeah. What we're really excited about is working on the Metal Gear movie trailer. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. The unofficial one. Right. And right. Just heard the official, the unofficial. Damn it! I thought I was in another Metal Gear movie. Lots of money has just been lost on bets. I'm sorry, internet. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that, we've been we've been working on that since um, New York, and it's just been the biggest load of fun. And I, I hope the fans will just go nuts. And yeah, yeah, for sure. I've heard I'll, the song, and they that. will go nuts. They, 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 it's, it's great, it is great. It is. Great. I've, I've listened to the sneak peek um, that you sent us, and it sounds pretty. It, it's got this like a bit of a James Bond vibe to it, which, which I really like. Yeah. And uh, yeah, 
Can't wait for mm. everyone else to see it. Now, speaking of the Metal Gear concert, I mean, obviously, you've been traveling around a lot from New York to L.A. and then back to Japan. So tell us a bit about what the process has been like setting that up. How long was that journey from saying, we want to make a concert to finally bring it to the audience? And what was that experience like? Well, I'm just the singer, so I have nothing to do with organizing mm. it. And... Um, Fortunately, they can't put another singer in to replace Stephanie or me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the robots haven't taken over our jobs yet, so that's awesome. Um, you know, maybe maybe a Stephanie or a Donna impersonator, no. Nah. And uh, <laughs> it's the challenge has been staying fit for me. I don't know, maybe also for, for Stephanie, because Sins of the Father is a bitch of a song to sing. And once oh, yeah. that in the first once that's over I'm like ah! you know, <laughs> chips in the ah! screaming yelling you know it's just it's so physically <clears throat> demanding and emotionally demanding so then snake snake eater it's just like I walk out I'm like hello it's yeah. Just yeah and then heaven's divide is it's it's I, I used to think it was difficult but now it's like eh. once and you've done sins of the father everything else just kind of doesn't compare, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And Stephanie, you were brought into the process at some point. So when were you contacted? How did you come to participate in the concert down the uh, line? Well, I think I was contacted about uh, one month before the Tokyo concert <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, was held. Uh, so I was really, really excited and pleasantly surprised to be asked to perform Quiet's theme. Mm -hmm. Um well, yeah, it, it, it's just one song, but I still, um, it's just such a huge honor to be able to sing with the Tokyo Philharmonic Orchestra and yeah. to present that to the fans. It was just an amazing experience. Yeah, for sure. Uh, is there a chance you might be coming to the U.S. and sing for us here? I would love to, but yeah. I don't know. Um I guess it's up to the folks arranging the whole thing to Yeah, I'm afraid it is. I would yeah. I would go <laughs> in a heartbeat. They were Yeah. asking me. I, I would have no hesitation of going, but um we'll see. Yeah. Well, at the very least we got to hear you sing during the game awards way back when, which was right. really nice. That was a while so, back. Yeah, yeah. So we got something at least. You got it first. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. I was Daily. less nervous this time. I I do have to say I enjoyed it more at the Metal Gear in concert. I I think mm -hmm. because you know it was it was just like a concert full of Metal Gear love. So yeah, for, yeah, it felt so comforting to be surrounded by by everyone who loves Metal Gear. You know. Yeah. Like, um, when I attended I uh, the concert in New York being surrounded by fans and everyone being there for the same purpose of loving the series, it really did add to the whole vibe, to the excitement, yeah, to the aura. Yeah, it's magical, I think. It really is. Um, and hearing the song live is um, very different from, you know, putting yeah. it on headphones or mm -hmm. blasting it on speakers. It, it uh, Just the way the sound carries through the theater, uh, I mean, the, the memories flooding in, uh, and I right. love the way you guys set it up so that it's, you know, timeline based. So you start from three, you know, and go to Peace Walker and, you know, like Ground Zeroes, Phantom Pain, one, two. So it, it it was going through the whole series again in my mind as the songs kept playing. Yeah, it was really cool. It was super cool. Did you hear people sobbing? I, I'm sure a few people did. I was too focused on... It's a review. Like this, someone just cried all the way through it and then when they, they thought they were going to stop another person and they were really annoyed. It really <laughs> comes to the experience. I mean, I got emotional for sure, uh, just uh, reminiscing. and Because uh, th there's so many memories I have with Metal Gear just from the very first game when, way back when I was still in Venezuela. And, oh, we lost. Daly, oh. you there? Yeah, I'm back. Oh, there we go. The video's a, back okay. up. I had a Skype crash. But yeah, so just... Uh, kind of reliving that uh, it brought me cer certain emotions so i'm sure some like a lot of people were sobbing or felt a lot of things and based on the people that i talked to after the concert yeah everyone were like man i i got the feels from that yeah 
Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It looked um, it looked fun. I didn't get to go. I did send um, one of uh, one of our um, viewers from here, Gabriel. I think um, they've been uh, working with uh, with Donna on some stuff. Coincidence. So this is all your doing. What's going to happen later? <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I was, uh, I was, I, I didn't obviously expect that uh, when we when we sent him uh, down there, but he had helped me on on a lot of different projects, creating the um, the art and stuff for the codex. So I, I wanted to give him, you know, something back. And uh, if I couldn't go, like, why shouldn't he? He lived right there. So yeah, we we uh, passed that off. I was super jealous because <clears throat> I saw the theater. That theater in New York was was absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it was unbelievable. It was such a work of art. Exactly. Yeah. I've never seen. I've been a couple of theaters here in, where I live in, in Jacksonville, and just nothing looks like that here. It was uh, amazing looking. Um, but uh, that actually kind of leaded into uh, one of the questions that I had, um, which was, uh, Donna, you do you know not just Metal Gear music. You do a lot of different music. Um, you do a lot of different stuff. Uh, Stephanie, obviously, you do a, a ton of different things with like you know the the modeling, the acting, all of that. What was it like for you guys to see like these fans showing up dressed up as these characters? Um, and how does that kind of compare to maybe some of the other avenues of work um, where you maybe don't see that so much? Hmm. Oh, well, to me, I just feel so flattered whenever I see someone dressed up as quiet. Right. Um, the first time um, I met a quiet cosplayer was at the Tokyo Game Show. Um, and and she was actually the same girl who showed up at, at the Metal Gear in concert in Tokyo. So oh, nice. I still remembered her. And it's just so amazing to see how far their love to the series goes. Right. And then for you, Donna, I mean, you have you have these people dressed up in, for this, you know, this video game and they know every word of the song, you know, that that you're singing. How does that, you know, translate for you as uh, as maybe opposed to some of the other stuff that you do? Um, as Stephanie said, it's just such an honor and you feel such uh, like, you know, um, it's surreal. It's. You feel grateful. You you know you're making some people's year. You're making their. You're touching them in a very. Um, it's a pri it's like a privilege, right. and it's like an ambassador. So if you're an ambassador of a country, you behave differently. You treat people with more respect, maybe than would you would because you you feel like you're on show, but that you've been given a great honor. And it needs yeah, to be yeah. a great, a, a, a great honor of office, and um, right. you know they don't have to line up and ask for your signature. They don't have to, you know, they they they're choosing to do that. And we all know we, we, when we've met a famous person, you always feel like you're bothering them. You just, oh, just, oh, hi, you know, hi. Uh, and so I know that feeling, and uh, it's so I get to calm people down say thank you and be right. and treat them with the same kindness that I would want yeah a, you know right. random celebrity that I was oh my god it's not random they they've really come to see mm -hmm. right it's really good. yeah I think um, that kind of plays into um, you know another aspect that I wanted to ask you both about and that's you know when Metal Gear Solid Five was was releasing, um, obviously we had you know Yudana doing you know the um, the iDroid and the song. Yeah, you the had... cosplaying for that. You didn't know that. <laughs> I guarantee you, there's an iDroid cosplay out there. And no one came to the concert, not in Paris. It's a big as thing. As an iDroid, just putting it out there. <laughs> it is. I, I understand that. Um, and you Actually, know, Stephanie. <laughs> You uh, you played you know Quiet, who obviously is a pivotal character in the game. Did you guys have any idea at that point when you were recording for the song Donna and and you um, Stephanie when you were doing motion capture and stuff for Quiet? Did you think you would be doing a concert you know years later, did, or did you think maybe that was the end at the at the end of the game? Obviously, you've got fans and stuff like that that carry over. But you know what was what was your idea of how this would would live on? Did you have any idea you'd be doing stuff like this? What four years down the road? Is that what we said it was? No. I hoped. I hoped. 
Yeah, but I, I couldn't imagine. Yeah, no. Right. It was hard to imagine. I was yeah. especially, um, I, I, w- I had no idea how, what people would think of Quiet, how, how she would be received as a character. So um, it's just a huge honor to see how well she was received and how um, people telling me, like, she's such a memorable character and uh, how much the song meant to them. That's just beyond my expectations. Very cool. Yeah, I think for um, a lot of fans, I mean, given, I guess, the way the Metal Gear series concluded uh, on the more corporate level, people weren't expecting much more. So exactly. I think for, for me and for a lot of us to see this concert, it's it's a treat to, to be able to relive that, um, to be able to continue you know, expressing our love for the series. Right. And, you know, now with the Metal Gear movie coming up, so there's still things going on, which I love. Exactly. So, that's, kind of, yeah. um, that's kind of what I was, I was getting at is I got an email uh, months ago before the concerts um, were, were going on. And I know they were talked about like the year before, um, but I didn't know if anything would come of it. And I got an email saying, hey, the concert's taking place in New York. Do you want to go? And I, I, I wanted just to message Donna. I don't know why I didn't and just say, how did you make this happen? Like, how, tell me about how that concert came to be did they approach you was it something that you guys asked to do like what was the the idea behind going out and playing metal gear music do you want to you want to know the 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 dorky corporate answer so there's a company called kyoto half and half okay (laughs) at at the at the um i'll I'll give you the quick answer okay at tokyo concert there was a guy who's famous in japan who came out and played calling to the night on piano Oh, I love that song. Yeah. Okay. So, but here's the thing. I said to Kyoto, who organized, who bought the rights from Konami to have the concert, to do the concert. Mm-hmm. And they, Kyoto got Nicholas Buck to arrange all the music. So Kyoto had got special permission from Konami. So I said to Kyoto, oh, we can't do another, we can't do another concert and it's just the same old, same old, you know, can't I sing another song? And they're like, mm-hmm. oh, what song? This is in Paris. What song do you want to sing? Calling to the night. Anyway, turns out, oh, Donna, you're not going to sing it. Some rando bloke, okay, he's super famous in Japan, but I don't know. <laughs> he's going to play your vocal song on the piano. And so yeah. I see the, the head of Kyoto. I'm like, what the, what the what? Yeah, that's not the And I was like, yeah. And they said, Donna, there wouldn't be a Metal Gear concert without that guy because we are a concert, you know, we're the geniuses of concerts. We're on another concert. With this guy, and he's just playing Metal Gear, Metal Gear, Metal Gear. And he said, Rando, famous piano bloke, said, you should do a concert of Metal Gear music. Mm. So, love it. And so when I saw him at the concert, I was like, oh, thank you. Without you, this would happen. <laughs> right. Wow. That is interesting. Um, very grateful. Because the guy made it happen. Spoke, spoke to people who know nothing about the music, said it's going to be a hit. They went to Konami, and Konami says, great. And that's how it happened, through a fan. Wow, that's that's huh. awesome. And I think that, that insight provides, you know, something that a lot of people were wondering is is how the rights were, were, were given here. And I think that's great that it was, you know, given you know, through, through fan access, which yeah. kind, of, kind of plays into, you know, what's dropping today, you know? There yeah. Was, that's, um, I think, what... A, can we talk about that yet? Is yeah, that, is it time? it's time. Okay, it's time. So um, before we move into Yong's next set of questions, um, I want to share something with, with you guys that are watching live. Those of you who are watching this on, on YouTube, I'm sure Yong will have links in the description for that, yeah. um, as, as will I. Um, but I want to drop um, a trailer in the chat that Donna shared with us. Um, I'm going to let you guys look at that and listen to it while Yong asks his next set of questions. So, Yong, if you want to go ahead and, and talk for a bit, I'm going to get this link sent to the people watching live and um, post it out on Twitter, and then I'll rejoin you guys. Trailer approaching.
I don't know how much you guys can say if you're even involved, but I want to talk about Death Stranding for a little bit. First of all, what do you guys think? You've, have you seen some of the trailers? Do you, do you think you, you understand what it's about? Um, and having worked with Kojima in the past, you know, what, what do you make of it uh, from what you've seen? What are your impressions? Donna, do you want to go first? <laughs> I was actually going to say, this is all Stephanie's answer. I know nothing. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I, uh, I think it looks amazing. Um, yeah. It look, looks unlike any game I've ever seen. Yeah, for sure. So, um, um, but I'm not involved, so. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm not sure. Um. I do want to talk a bit about um, how I feel like Young you put out a few videos um, speculating about my involvement. Yeah. And um, I think there has been a lot of confuse, uh, or like it has been pretty confusing um, mm -hmm. the information out there. Uh, if a lot of people have been asking me if I was involved or not, mm -hmm. and. Um, so actually, um, this was really early uh, when the new Kojima Productions was just founded. And um, actually, uh, Kojima-san contacted me directly. And um, I speak Japanese, so he contacted me. Mm -hmm. And he uh, asked me if I was willing to play uh, this character in, uh, in Death Stranding. And... Um, he actually sent some uh, really awesome looking concept art from uh, Yoji Shinkawa with it and a character description. And uh, maybe I should show you guys because otherwise it's just uh, sure. empty words. It's a spoof. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. Wow. Is this something um, I'd, would you prefer stay private or would I be able to put this up on the video No, itself? I don't mind. I think. Okay. Like, I, I'm not under any NDA from Kojima okay. Productions, so um, I, it was just sent to my phone, so I don't know if you can tell. Oh, it's hard to oh, see. Oh, yeah, this whoa. Is the character. Oh, fragile. Right, but obviously I I ended, I am not cast, cast as this yeah, character. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, for like the, the early days in development, uh, for mm -hmm. quite a while, I was under the impression that I was going to be involved in Death Stranding. Mm -hmm. And um, then there was silence for a, a, a long time. And oh. so my management, uh, after like about a year or so, because in the meantime, I wasn't going to bother Kojima-san because mm -hmm. obviously he's he's been super busy setting up the new Kojima Productions. And, right. Um, so my management contacted Kojima Productions, and uh, the answer we got back then was that uh, casting had been finalized. So that's when I found out I, I wasn't involved in Death Stranding. Oh. So that's, 
So that's I see. Because I was, know it was very, oh, all very confusing. So I feel bad for um, because I feel like you and the community have been very confused about it, and yeah. uh, a lot of people have kind of been expecting me to be involved, um, but I ended up not being involved. And I I think it's just that Kojima-san took a different route, a different mm -hmm. approach. Um, he probably wanted to use uh, Hollywood actors and sure. maybe reach, reach a larger audience. So, you know, I, I totally understand. And uh, they're great actors and so experienced. Yeah. So they'll do an amazing job. So I, I don't want to feel bitter about it. But sure. I just wanted to put that out there to, uh, That's... to clear that up. Yeah, that's good to know, because I think a lot of fans, they saw, you know, Kojima putting on the hat, and then I think there was an event where they asked you some questions, and you said, I can't comment or, on that, or, you know, you were kind of coy about it, so a lot of fans were mm -hmm. thinking, oh, Stephanie's teasing something here. Mm -hmm. um, so I think this helps clarify maybe why some things may have seemed one way early on, and then nothing, you know, we, we right. kind of started hearing nothing about that theory on the latter uh, half of the this development cycle. So that's very insightful. And I think uh, fans will appreciate that. And uh, yeah, thank you for the clarification. And yeah, I just wanted to clarify that. So. Yeah, and then I, I I saw this one character in the trailer where they showed off Troy Baker's character, the, the man in the golden mask, Higgs, as he's now known. Mm -hmm. And there was this character that Norman was carrying and she had like glasses and from a side view, it, I thought it looked just like you, and I thought that that's Stephanie. I know a lot of people have been sending that image to me, and um, yeah, even I thought she looked like me. And yeah, I was confused about the Dutch flag as well. So right, right. Uh, and then again, my my management was like, "Wait, wait, aren't you in it after all? Isn't he like?" <laughs> so it was really confusing. Huh. But yeah. Yeah, I know. Um, I don't know why that was, but yeah, that is strange. I know. I know. Um. You know, with like David Hayter, for example, he had a similar kind of confusing process where uh, he, you know, he talked to the people and then it was kind of radio silent. And then he learned that Kojima went a different route with Kiefer. So, yeah, that's oh. uh, it's interesting. Um, mm. But, you know, Kojima, he has an interesting he has his own way of working and he has a vision. And uh, I suppose... Yeah, he, he felt he had to go a certain route to realize that vision, which, you know, uh, from, from a creative perspective, I can I can respect. But uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, but for sure, uh, that that must have been very confusing to have gotten that call and then nothing. Yeah, then, it was. But, well, yeah, <laughs> it is what it is. Were you consciously trying to tease something for fans like i know you took like a picture with matt's poster at one point and people read into that and well, all these different things bit. um well i'm also just a fan of matt's mickelson so um yeah. it, i wasn't too conscious about it but <laughs> yeah but still at that point i i was thinking i i was going to be involved so mm -hmm. If I may ask, uh, there was a picture of you visiting Guerrilla Games at one point. Did that play into that at all? Because we know now that Kojima is collaborating with Guerrilla with mm -hmm. the Decima game engine, and a lot of people drew from that as well to speculate is she in talks for, for something there? Or was this an early part of the process of her casting? You know, What uh, was that all about, if I may ask? No, it, it might be a bit disappointing, but that was just um, because I have friends working at Guerrilla Studios, and awesome. it's the biggest studio in the Netherlands. So yeah, I was I was really just visiting. Awesome, awesome. And you met uh, some of the people there, the like the creative head at all. Uh, Herman? Yeah, and I got a little sneak peek at their uh, new games development. So that, that was is awesome. Too. Yeah, I think I, my theories they're probably working on a sequel to Horizon. I don't know if that's been confirm but I I, sh I I hope so because that first game was truly uh, one of the pinnacles of that year in my opinion and uh, yeah what those folks are doing it's amazing obviously Kojima uh, was very impressed with their engine with their technology mm -hmm. so I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, what they bring to the table Looks but it's cool. good to get that clarification from right. from you we don't have to barrage you anymore <laughs> with questions and <laughs> okay. uh, theories and I'll stop making these videos that lead you, people to ask uh, you questions that you're like, I can't, I don't know. So, yeah, <laughs> That's all right. 
Yeah. I've got a, a question for you, Donna. Um, I want to talk while this trailer is, is being sent out. Um, can you tell me about the process that went into creating this song? Um, because as as I know, I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but this song didn't exist in, when you guys did the so concert are you in New York. Um, Ah, Sorry, yeah. Uh, you're, you're now you're back. That's good. Can you start again? Yes. Uh, sorry, we're. I think we're we're uploading, so maybe we're data capping here. Um, so uh, what I was asking is, um, I I think correct me if I'm wrong, but as of the concert in New York, the song that's being put out today didn't exist. Can you walk that's me through? Right. That's exactly you, right. Can you walk me through how you created this song in such a short period of time? Um, to me, it seems like ages because I get alert on Google every day. Metal Gear Solid the movie. Metal Gear Solid the movie. And I think, right. what the mother bastard's going to create a song from scratch and, and release it? <laughs> and the spoof video. I'm not the genius I thought I was. So, um, so what, what happened is I um, contacted Jordan Boat Roberts last year and asked him, to be in Metal Gear Solid the movie, as you do on Instagram. <laughs> and he texted me back saying, Donna, if there's a movie, you'll be in it. I love your work. So after I got my heart started again, um, I was like, holy, holy Batman. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, but those Sony execs, I've got a few friends that work at Sony. They're fun. But, you know, they're, they're, they'll just shut Paul Jordan down. They, they'll be like, who the hell's Donna Burke? We're getting Adele to sing the theme song. And, <laughs> and so I was like, it's all very well for Jordan to flatter me like that. Um, anyway, I contacted him again um, and, and got said, asked him if he wanted some free tickets for the concerts. And then around that time, he puts out the, the, the poster for um, Oscar Isaac. And mm -hmm. because Jordan is a fan like everyone else, and he heard the, the rando comment of, yeah, I think I'd like to play Snake if Metal Gear Solid the movie, and straight away goes and gets a professional you know, boss guy in Australia to make a movie poster, puts it out on the internet, like, just saying, you know, I didn't, Jordan wrote, I didn't say it, but if, you know, this is what the movie, and I always thought that was so fun, so mm -hmm. like, Getting ahead of the movie executives who are like, well, I don't think the numbers on Oscar Isaac are exactly worth, you know, we've got a young guy that we And he's just like jumping ahead, guerrilla marketing, getting yeah. this guy's image in front of everyone's mind. And I thought, that is so fun. He's, he's playing by, by a fun rule. And so that I thought I got inspiration for that. I thought if Jordan Vogt Roberts can make a spoof uh, mm -hmm. movie, Stuff, I can make a spoof bloody trailer movie song and just give myself permission to I'm actually I'm actually writing the song I'm singing singing the song and this is what it it's going to look like and it's been so deliciously fun <laughs> wow so yeah, and the song's super powerful and uh, yeah. young, I don't, don't mean to, to cut you off there but could could you um, tell us where the kind of inspiration for these lyrics came from? Did you look at your like past work or did you look maybe to what you thought the movie would be set like? So um, in, in, when we were in, um, I got the idea when we were in New York and um, I just asked Ray uh, Azaga, this Canadian guy who was photographing, who's a freaking like library of metal gear. And, and he started saying, oh, I think, I think the movie's going to be set in about with Solid Snake. So here's me. Sorry, guys, I have never played the game. So I'm like looking up who's Solid Snake on the, on the World Wide Web, right. as you do. And then I got lots of detail about his story. And then Nicholas, who's the arranger, so he's listened. To, he's the guy that's that that orchestrated all of the whole concerts and he's played it. He's deeply embedded. He's seen the videos over and over. He's played the game. I thought he'd be perfect because I could have asked, I could have approached um, some of the other composers from the game that I've worked with and I'm on friendly terms with, but I thought it might be too much. Mm -hmm. And Nick is, is, is attached, but he's unattached. 
and he's the perfect and he's he's, he's conducted for Bond movies. Oh, wow. wow. And he's he's a he's a master of movie theme songs, and that's what we're going for. We're going for a movie trailer. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. I asked about it, and then I met with um, Gabriel from Quadic Cloud, and it all came together like this is going to happen. So what, uh, the lyrics came from Nick sending me the score, and just like when I did the demos for Sins of the Father, I, I, just, I just listen to it and I just write down anything, and maybe two-thirds of it is perfect. Mm-hmm. It's, it's all in the subconscious and it just comes out. And then there's a third, and then you start singing. You think, oh, that, oh, oh, that sounds – or I think these lyrics are trying too hard. And so it's quite an easy process for me. Wow. Very cool, very cool. Sorry, y'all, go ahead, buddy. Yeah, so uh, you said uh, you, you've – Jordan himself contacted you saying no. – he responded to me contacting him. Let's just. Uh, okay. Uh, or uh, right. Uh, he contacted you, contacted he, you back. Yeah. yeah. He responded, okay. and yeah. so uh, yeah. Do you, is there something a partnership in the works there for the Metal Gear Solid movie? Can we expect to hear your well, powerful if, voice? If you look at the trailer of the, for Metal Gear Solid the movie, the unofficial movie mm-hmm. trailer, it says in a parallel universe productions. Mm-hmm. Right. In a parallel universe, I will be singing the theme song because no Sony exec will be saying, it's Adele, bitch, get away. It'll be Jordan will be a god who has all power, all casting decisions will go through right. him and That's... he will deign it so. And uh, so this is me but copying him, getting ahead of the crowd, getting ahead of them, the people with real power and mm-hmm. getting the fans. This song is going to be so in their heads that they will – it's smart. It is. It's very yeah. catchy. It's fun. Yeah. I, th- I think we'll see what happens because I think Jordan's really leveraging the fact that there is a fandom surrounding this, that they really care, that there is a history behind these games, and that nothing short of pleasing the fans and making this for the fans will do this movie justice. So I think, you know, him bringing you in is really not a, that much of an unlikely prospect. Jordan's already brought in uh, uh, some of the actors the, of the Metal Gear Solid games to do some bits as part of his, you know, the, the marketing campaign, the guerrilla marketing, as you put it. He's bringing in everything, I think. He's really leveraging everything. And so, you know, Jordan, if you're watching this, <laughs> you would be a fool to not have Donna <laughs> sing for you, man. Come on. <laughs> Okay, this is an audition. I heard a lot of the A-lister things. So, so maybe there's a part in the movie where somebody <laughs> brings the water. <laughs> do that. I could, I could nail that. Or someone has to do that. Right? Audition reel right here. We got it. You know, blows out a candle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can't do that very well. <laughs> you could be one of the soldiers, you know, or... There you go. Who drops a gun? Uh, and then you know, like, the torch because like in, in, in Star Wars, um, one of the stormtroopers was like uh, Daniel right. Craig, for example. Like little things like that. You could. Oh, I heard about that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I love, so you know that, that Ricky Gervais um, series, extras. I totally want to be an extra when I and I'm supposed to hand the cup, but then you know they always sort of come. You know, the right. Yeah. You can barely. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> right. And fans can spot they'll be like, hey, that's I know that a person. Yeah. I know that broad hand. <laughs> yes. Um, now uh oh, go ahead. Fun. You just we just want to have fun. We want people to f- feel like it's actually happened. Yeah. Sure. sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think it's also something nice just to give back to the fans. Um the way like the whole Metal Gear saga ended, I feel People will be so happy to, even if it's just a spoof, like, it'll yeah. keep the fan base alive. Yeah, I think, um, like, Jordan himself is kind of, he's kind of doing fan art. When he did the whole Metal Gear 30th anniversary thing, he was yeah. being a fan and putting out fan art from all these amazing artists. And to see this song now uh, from from the singer of Sins of the Father, which is, I, for, in my part, I think it's kind of an iconic song in the Metal Gear series. It's... It's kind of become a meme, like like a, a lot of people um, reference that song often. 
um, <laughs> in, in, yeah, in, in a lot of scenarios. So have you heard that, that have you heard the, I, I do a bit of a woho at the end of yeah. hanging thread. And uh, it, it was really funny when we were recording it, I, I was like at the very end, Oh, and then, oh, that didn't sound good. That, and I was like, ah! Oh, no, that sounds like a cat. <laughs> no, no, no. Take after take after take. And then I was like, oh, I've got an idea. And then I was like, whoa. Oh, oh, oh. Was like, yeah. I just That's lovely. shot the whoa ho at the very end. Archie, well, I liked it. It was good. It was good. Archie doesn't like it. He's running away. Oh. <laughs> oh. It's a frame, mate. <laughs> <laughs> pretty sure after so, that we're gonna get a we have a david hater cat account we're gonna get a donna burke cat account i'm, guys, I'm calling please, for that yeah. somebody's gonna make that <laughs> definitely um I've, I've got a question uh what about um the the future of this kind of spoof project obviously it's dropping today so we need to give it some time to develop but is there any chance that you continue to do more stuff like this and maybe you two do a song together yeah I have issues with Stephanie's fame, so I don't think my ego can stand it. Um, no, I, we, so Stephanie got, um, was a good sport and she came in um, and she will be in the music video, which will, which will be coming out next week. Paul, Paul Gabriel. It's kind of like the behind the scenes video, I think right? we have some No, but it's also in the music video. I haven't told you this, but. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Start, I know about that. It starts with you because everyone knows Stephanie's a lovely person and she's really sweet and stuff. So when she has to play me, it's really hilarious. So in the um, in the music video for Hanging by a Thread, it will start like a movie where Stephanie's sort of, can you just do it one more time, Donna, with her sort of like, because oh. that's shit before. And then, uh, the, then the trail, then the whole the song comes out, and at the very end, I come out of the the booth with her like a, so how, how did I do, Steph? And she's sort of on a phone. Oh, well, um, yeah, yeah, it was great. So it's <laughs> just really fun for the fans to see I her see, being. Uh, I see her face remembering this happening. <laughs> yeah. So you didn't know that that footage was going to be used for this? Oh, yeah, I, I kind of forgot about all the little parts we we shot. <laughs> That's very funny. cool. Yeah, but, I think yeah, um, we sort of say behind the scenes kind of clip um, on on email. So maybe we'll take a look at that um, later. So yeah, with with um, with this trailer um, and this new song coming out, um, do you do you plan on maybe doing some more stuff like this? I'd love to, and I, it's um, it it's addictive, and it's uh, let's just see what their reaction is because I I want to do another one. I don't yeah. know if Gabriel um, Morel wants to. He's probably having a nervous breakdown or <laughs> recovery. Poor guy, he's done a good job. He's a hard worker. He will he works on the stuff that he's assigned day and night. Well, see, <laughs> see we all have dreams, and yeah. I'm, I want to be helping Gabriel. Gabriel's helping my dream, and yep. I'm hoping he gets his dream of working in a studio doing what he loves. So he's got yep. a normal job now. But guys, yep. contact him if you're looking for a great, talented, amazing, hardworking person. Yeah, he's a great editor. He's uh, done a lot of stuff um, for me. I, I run a... Um, a fan-made Halo uh, role-playing thing, and he makes trailers for us all the time. Um, and like I said, he just he puts his heart into these things. And watching that trailer, I can tell he really spent a lot of time, um, kind of bringing your vision to life because that's what that's what he does for me. Is we give him like a, a kind of road to follow, and he just sets out and his creative juices start flowing. I barely told him anything. It's all him. That's what I'm saying. You just you give him like an idea of what he needs to do, and he just he just goes. And, and... We copied Jordan Vote Roberts' idea of using the image of Oscar Isaac yeah. and taking his movie action and putting him in a Metal Gear background. That's what that's what right. Gabriel did, which makes it seem so oh, like you're really watching. You're, like your heart rate goes up. You actually feel like, oh my god, I really want to see this movie. So I showed. 
my friend who's never seen anything to do with Metal God, she's I want to see the movie. This movie is awesome. <laughs> And it's it's a like a compilation of different things. It's not even you know like that actual movie, which is amazing. That's that's great. Um, y'all, you want to take uh, the next question? Yeah. Um, so E three is coming up, and Donna, you briefly hinted at something we can expect from you. But I just wanted to ask if you guys are excited for anything about E three that you've heard about. What you might want to see? Any games? Any trailers? Any rumblings? You might want to tune into or anything you might be able to tease at in regards to, I don't know if Stephanie, there's something at E3 we might be able to expect. Uh, it's still, it's a bit too early for E3. Sure. Okay. Fair enough. Oh, um, hang on a second. I'm oh, sorry. Just sorry. I'm interrupting you. I just realized what I, what I can say is I'm really excited to see final fantasy crystal chronicles be re-released, which I'm in. And sorry, there's no NDA about that. I don't know why I'm carrying on. That's what I'm excited about. Crystal I'm hoping, Chronicles. I'm hoping that's going to be announced that it's coming out. Because they've okay. been coming out, coming out. So they've never, they don't tell me when it's coming out. So I'm hoping that's. Okay. okay. I, oh. I know there's a Final Fantasy VII remake that they're showing off more of at E3, which is exciting because that was my personal first. Right, that's what I'm excited about, about too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it looks really interesting. A bit nervous maybe because they're changing a lot of the gameplay mechanics. It's a lot more action-based, so we'll see how that works out. But right. I love the visuals. I love seeing these characters with modern graphical fidelity. So, uh, and, and it harkens back to a lot of memories that, that I had at, growing up as a gamer. For me too. I'm I'm just not too happy about the uh, probably episodic release. Yeah, I, I guess we'll have to deal with that. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Um, I mean, for me, Final Fantasy VII, it's a whole package, and it has to come as a package. It has to be the full experience from beginning to end. For them to end it at to be continued. It, it, I don't know if that's the yeah, kind of thing you want be. for for right. Final Fantasy VII, but. Um, yeah, you're you're a big uh, Final Fantasy fan. I I take it because I know you did like a playthrough of 15 at one point in your Steph well, plays right. channel. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking I, of, I oh, go I, ahead. Oh, sorry. No. Yeah, I guess that that that's my biggest gaming fandom at least. Oh yeah. Final and Fantasy. I'm also a big Star Wars fan. So. Ooh, what do you think of uh, that new trailer for Episode Nine? If you've seen it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen it. Um, I'm very excited. Um, I try not to have too many ex expectations. Sure. Um, I like to go into the films as just as blank as possible. Mm -hmm. So sure. I just watch the trailer once, one time, and then I yeah. try not to look into it too much. <laughs> I know. Um, oh, did, we just, did we just switch from E3 to talking about films? Because I can talk about films. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. What's your sure. take on stuff? Well, I haven't seen the new Star Wars movie, but I am a huge fan. I thought you were talking about the game, so I was just sitting there like, oh, I don't play that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, sorry. Back to you. Uh, no, I mean, there is a new Star Wars game coming out as well, The Jedi Fallen Order, which also looks really good. But yeah, mm -hmm. uh, the ninth episode, there's that laugh at the end, which hints at potentially mm -hmm. a certain character returning. So I'm wondering that's what that's all about. He's not dead. Oh no, uh, Palpatine. He, we, I think a lot of. <laughs> it's not like. Oh, he's from the the Emperor from the, from the from the, from the, the original movies. You know the good good <laughs> that guy. Oh, I, I can't remember him being dead. Oh, well, I'm still I'm still shocked that he's handsome. Everything oh. is proceeding as I foreseen. You know that him. Yeah. He's one of my favorite characters. I think. Yeah, and the actor is so into it. Um, and he actually, at the when they released the trailer, he showed up um, after the trailer finished playing, and he said, "Play it again." And then they <laughs> played the trailer again, and that was the whole oh, event. Yeah, that's how right. they concluded the event. So that seems like a pretty strong hint, yeah, it's right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It seems like it's going to be a, a busy, a busy year for video games and and, and television. I think. Um, you know, YouTube definitely will have a lot of opportunity there. We've got the Witcher series coming out. Um, there's talk of a Star Wars, The Old Republic. You uh, mean Cyberpunk? A, um, no, the, the uh, for movies. There's a Netflix oh, old movies. Witcher, gotcha. Yeah, get the Witcher. Um, there's a Star Wars one in the works. Um, I don't know if it's a TV show 
or a movie as of yet, but it's the Old Republic, um, like the MMO uh, that's mm-hmm. out right now. Um, you've got Metal Gear hopefully doing something this year. Sonic. Uh, Hal- Halo. Sonic. Oh, yeah. Wow. So yeah. there's there's a there's a big resurgence. I, I don't think um, there's been this many video game movies since Mortal Kombat back in is, the eighties. Do you guys think it's because uh, it was Marvel's finished and now they're all desperate for the next big? Uh, they've already got all the fan base. So it's franchise. Yeah. 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 And I mean, Detective Pikachu just proved you can actually make a pretty good, uh, yeah, ad- adaptation from video game to, to film. So, I'm excited for the future of of these adaptations. Hopefully, it's done for the right reasons, like with the Metal Gear Solid movie, which mm-hmm. I feel like it's in good hands with Jordan. He has he seems to be in contact with Kojima a lot, which is kind of nice. They seem to be buddy buddy. And he seems to have a strong vision. He seems to be a genuine fan. So we'll see how that works out. And, uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully Jordan will contact you two and get you involved somehow. I think he should bring everybody in and find a way to <laughs> please the fans that way. Yeah. yeah. As I said, here's my glass. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, as we get into the kind of tail end of the interview, we get some wrap-up questions. I got one for, for each of you, Donna, if you want to take the, the answer first. Um, this goes back a little bit into, into Metal Gear. Um, you both have really taken a dive into, like, the Metal Gear scene. Donna, you're doing the, the um, concerts with uh, Stephanie, and you're doing your own, you know, fan kind of um, professional creation for this uh, trailer. Um, Stephanie, you've obviously... Uh, done a lot uh, showing up in cameos for different uh, musical events and um, all the stuff that you've done with Quiet. What exactly about Metal Gear has stood out to you guys where you've put so much passion into into doing this stuff? Um, was it the, the fan connection? Is it the story? Is it a co- combination of the both? Kind of tell me what's kind of drawn you back into working into this project. Um, the songs, the music's so powerful. It's so raw, it's so deep, it's so satisfying. It it goes to very. It's it's amazingly complex for me as. And to connect to be able to connect with, with, the people who have experienced those characters in the game and who literally were that character. So it's not, it's not like they watched the movie passively. That they were they were. They were quiet. They were snake. They were so it's sort of way deeper than just being a in a movie. Or I'm 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 blabbering because um, it's really late and it's past my bedtime. It's really early for me. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. No, it's okay. It's okay. This it's is amazing so worth it. how many different time zones we are doing. This. I know. <laughs> I know. But we, we really wanted to make it happen. So I think uh, I definitely want to thank thank you, Donna and, and Stephanie and Yong, for, for making it happen. I know uh, us living all, all, all across the globe is definitely hard to do uh, these dual interviews together. I'm not a morning person, but this <laughs> might just convert me right here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Uh, and so, Stephanie, so for you, what, what was kind of your draw to continue, you know, doing this music for, for Metal Gear? Um, you know, I think a, a lot of people – um, take take a misconception with this because there are some some actors and some singers that you know once they finish with a the project they're like you know it was good now it's time for me to do the next thing and you guys have just continued to kind of breathe life into you know the Metal Gear universe since it's you know basically on hiatus until the foreseeable future. Um, what, what what was about it for you that kind of wanted you to to kind of come back and keep doing it? Well, like how Donna said. Um... I think gaming is just such a deep medium and that's what makes it so different. The whole just experience, experiencing how, how deep it goes for the fans and um, also just having these really loyal fans who, who keep supporting me throughout the years. And um, and that, that's just, it's one of the most beautiful things and I I never expected it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure how to sum it up. Yeah, I know. We're not at the level where like 
I'm sorry, I'm shooting a movie. I don't have time to do a <laughs> concert or, you know. I'm, right. No, it's like, it's hell yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm just so grateful for all the support people yeah. give you. Definitely. Yeah. We see that. Right. We see that here. I mean, you guys are here having an, an interview with us when you, you know, you could be talking to, you know, the Washington Post or something. You know, there's you're, you're here on Skype doing an interview with, you know, a, um, a successful YouTuber and a, you know, uh, an interviewer. So I think, um, you know, that a really shows that you guys are reachable. What was that, Donna? A policeman. Uh, yeah. <laughs> future. future. Got to yes, gotta pass first. <laughs> gotta gotta pass first, but uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll, that'll that'll be successful. I, um, I suggest you watch Brooklyn Nine 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 or whatever. That, that is a I, great I, show. I, I yeah. heard it's accurate. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, well, that's um, that's the last main question that I had, Yong. If you want to take up any other ones before we get into uh, plug time. I mean, I, I think I've uh, I think I've asked everything that I've that I've, I've been got curious that about. Too for you guys because yeah. what do you think about Death Stranding with all the movie stars and and Lindsay Wagner and Mads and everyone? What's, <laughs> we know that he wanted, Kojima San wanted to use Keeper because it was going to turn into a movie thing and then it all mm -hmm. went pear shaped. So what, what, what's, what's, what's going on with the, is it, is it going to be a movie? The Death Stranding? Norman Reedus and... I mean, I, I don't want to draw this out to another hour. Just no. talking about what, no. uh, but, but, I mean, I, I mean, it's a, very much a video game, and Kojima is, he's always tried to fuse the, the cinema world with the interactive world. He's, he's talked a lot about how he believes that in the not so distant future, they're basically going to be one and the same thing. Um, and, and, you know, in fact, it's funny, in Netflix, we recently saw the, the show, what is it called? Uh, Black Mirror. Black Mirror. Black they released Mirror. Oh, an interactive that. episode recently, so really? it's kind of he, he kind of has a point where we are we are seeing the two worlds fuse together, and I think it's him just perpetuating that by using Hollywood actors and making these games so cinematic. But at the same time, I think uh, when it comes to playing the game, there's a lot of meta elements where he brings the player themselves into the game. With Metal Gear Solid Five, you know he tried to essentially make the player a part of the legacy and make us. Uh, a, another side of the big boss coin, if you will, um, make us another side of that character. And it was his way of sending this message of, uh, you are a part of this too, thank you. It was kind of like that kind of message. And um, even in Metal Gear Solid 1, we saw how uh, you, you could literally uh, take the controller. There was at one point, Snake was tortured, and he uh, has this nano suit that can give him massages. And so the other person at the other end of the call said, hey, Snake, take the, take the controller and put it on your shoulder, and then it would start vibrating, and Snake would be like, uh, yeah, and, you know, or Psycho Mantis, you know, that right. boss battle, mm -hmm. very meta, and so I think, yeah, it's, it's him trying to fuse the, the two worlds while bringing the audience into it, um, and now with Death Stranding, the theme is connections, which is... Uh, trying to bring people together. We don't know what right. the gameplay system will be like, but he's trying to make a game where people, instead of shooting each other competitively, they have to work together to rebuild the world. That's the theme. Right. But but how that manifests, we'll find out when the game launches. So that's kind of my brief thoughts on that. But um, in terms uh, of character yeah. motivations and theory surrounding that... Oh my God, I could go on forever. So I'll that's, let you take it away. His, that's his job. He could definitely do it forever. I tell you what, <laughs> uh, I'm waiting for him to, to to figure out something where I've got to put the controller in like the freezer for an hour, and it's got to be like a certain temperature for me to play the game. Uh, that's, I wouldn't that's, put it past him. That's the kind of stuff that uh, you know we can expect from him. And I, I think um, I think regardless of how you know Death Stranding plays or feels, it's good for him to kind of get away from what he had been doing. And, and do something different. Um, you know, obviously, uh, I'm a huge Metal Gear fan, and um, I, I hope there's something in the pipe for Metal Gear. Will it be the same? I don't. I don't think so. But regardless of that, putting like those feelings aside, I think Death Stranding is a, a perfect way for for him to branch out, do something that he he wants to do rather than something that he's being told to do. Um, so that that's that's where I'm I'm on it right now. I've seen the trailers. Um, uh, they're you know. 
they're super in depth. There's a lot going on there, and I, I think um, I think for me. The biggest thing is as long as he makes the game that he wants to make, um, you know, I'll play it and, and see see how I feel about it then. Um, but uh, I definitely think um, there's there's more uh, that that he hasn't said yet. He, he often does this, you know, with like with Metal Gear Solid 5, you know, he, he did that the same thing where, you know, the, the character swap and all of that. So this is this yeah. is his, his element and he's definitely in it. Um, yeah, and uh, hopefully, I don't know. Uh... I don't know if Stephanie, uh, if you I, I, have you been in touch with Kojima since, or has that kind of fizzled out? Hopefully, you, uh, you guys can no, reach out and. Really. Oh, yeah, I see. we'll tell I'm, them you. I'm sending him a, a few Snake Eater t-shirts, um, <laughs> and I talk to Ludwig from time to time. We're, we're yeah. friends. Yeah. Oh yeah. Ludwig. I had a quick, uh, I had a quick question about that. I, I've heard that they are actually releasing some Metal Gear vinyl up at uh, San Diego Comic Con. Um, do you have anything to do with that? Are you going to be there? No, I, I do not. But I have heard talk of the next, uh, the concerts being recorded. Oh, oh very awesome. cool, very cool. Yeah, so um, to, in, in the future, that they haven't been done yet. So that's really exciting. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This is um, specifically, uh, I think um, it was from Rika Muranaka, who worked on some of the earlier Metal Gear games as a composer. Mm -hmm. um, she said something about there was going to be a, a release of some Metal Gear Solid tracks on, on vinyl, and I didn't know if maybe you had anything to do with that. No, I'm not in contact with her. Okay. All right. Well, um, that pretty much wraps up the, the the bulk of the interview. Thank you guys so much for answering all the questions. Let's um, Let's get into plug time. Please, uh, recent projects, uh, social media stuff. Um, Donna, if you want to tell us okay. what you're working on, what do you want people to go watch right now? Be besides the trailer, which we're going to be pushing right now. On Spotify and listen to Hanging uh, by a Thread. It just right. dropped three hours ago. Can you send us some links when this is over to, to the Spotify? Spotify and it's on iTunes. And, awesome. iTunes. and wait next Perfect. week, the, um, the, the video with Stephanie being a little bit mean. Well, yeah, it's a music video. Okay. <laughs> so we've got, we've got the song, <laughs> we've got the song, the teaser trailer, um, a music video with Stephanie uh, coming up, um, and then do you have any more concert dates going on? I've no, not for Metal Gear. I've got a uh, anime jazz gig. Oh, I've got a anime jazz gig in um, Tokyo next Saturday, the fourteenth, okay. and then I'll be in New York at the Bowery Electric. Um, Performing with uh, Jay Ensemble, um, Patrick Bartley. So it's my first time to be a jazz performance, and I'll be doing all wow. my game and anime songs. Very so cool. if you're in New York, come and see me. I'll be a lot more approachable. I won't have any people around me. So I bring your stuff. I'll do all the signings. There we go. Okay, that's awesome. I think uh, I think it would be interesting to have uh, maybe you and, and Quentin Flynn do a song together. He's been doing a lot of music lately. Um, I might I might see if he wants to uh, get in contact with you. Maybe you guys can do another Metal Gear song. He plays uh, Raiden in, in Metal Gear Solid 2 and 4. And Revengeance. And Revengeance. Oh. I got to meet him at a convention in Kuwait. He's an amazing I saw the, I saw the pictures. Super yeah. nice. Oh, Very fun. cool. Yeah. Oh, so more spoof stuff, more fan content, but of a really high quality. Like, it's, it's getting a, a live studio orchestra is... That's mm -hmm. awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and uh, what about you, Stephanie? What do you have um, going on right now that you want people to go check out? What's in the kind of future for you? Uh, well, um, people will have to wait for uh, a little while. But um, so my character Soma in Space Lords will be coming out um, somewhere in later this summer. So, but um, I guess um, keep an eye on my Twitter. Uh, I'll announce the. Um, release date uh, when once I know it and the same goes for Last Labyrinth um, I'm really excited uh, I, I learned a lot about VR so I'm, I'm actually really excited about VR gaming right now um, yeah I hope more people will be in in the future I hope it becomes more accessible mm -hmm. and um, yeah when uh, Last Labyrinth's release date um, will come out I will um, Make sure to put it on Twitter as well. Is it a PSVR? A PC? It's multi-platform, so it'll be okay. PSVR. Um, 
but actually it's also scheduled to come out on Oculus uh, Quest. Right. That's awesome. Now too, so. Quest, Is that the wireless I think. one? Yeah. Yeah. That's the one that's, I think, really Mm -hmm. going to push been the saving boundaries. up for that one. Yeah. We're ready, ready, ready for that. I'm just, Yeah. I'm just realizing so my spell. I keep saying Suma and Houston, but it's actually Soma and Yosten. Right. Right. Yeah. Soma is, is another really unusual um, spelling and, and pronunciation. So. Yeah, they, I think they based that off of your name a little bit with the, the two O's. That's what it feels Yeah. like anyway. Right. Okay. Well, um, most popular uh, social media links for you ladies where we'd like to put the, the most the ones where fans can kind of contact you or express opinions up front. Um, which, what is that going to be for you, Donna? Is that going to be Twitter? Uh, Twitter for me and Donna Burke Singer on Facebook. Okay, Facebook and Twitter. And then for you, Stephanie? Uh, for, mo for me, it's mostly Twitter and Instagram. Okay. Instagram. Twitter and Instagram. All right, so we'll make sure we have those two links um, forefront uh, for everybody watching this on, on the post. Yong, you got anything to say to wrap up, buddy? Just, uh, it's been a pleasure. We should do this more often. Um, Yeah, I it's think so just, too. yeah, it's great to hang out. It's great to see you guys all again. It's great to see... Um, how far you guys keep pushing in your respective careers. And uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what's in store for, for all of you. It's, it's just uh, it's great. It's just great to see all of this happen. And I'm looking forward to seeing your first voice gig. Thank you. Right. Thank Definitely. you. That's I've exciting. already... I've already sent some emails out for you, man. I hope I hope somebody can, so I hope somebody contacts you. Uh, I know there's a lot of game developers making some awesome games right now that could use a talent like you. I know you. you we did some stuff uh, uh, for D and D Mass Effect. That was super fun. I know you Yeah, got a good I, chance. I got to work on a couple uh, on one indie game called Lorelei, and Yep. I play this character called Jimmy the Traveler, and it's so fun. It's I, this is this is what I need. Cast again, Jimmy the Traveler, just because you moved. from <laughs> Delaware to, yeah. Welcome to our world, typecast. thank you i'm so excited um yeah this is my element and i i'm looking forward to 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 Good on you. improving and to growing as i guess an actor if you will we'll see what happens Do you, do you still do your famous outro, Young? oh hell yeah All right, let's get it. with that i will see you guys next time yong out Thank you. Thank you, Steph. Thank Thank you. you, Stephanie. Thank you, Thank Donna. you. You guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Yong. Enjoy your day. Uh, we'll definitely be in contact on email and get uh, links and all that stuff worked out. You guys have a great rest of the day. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, guys. And thank you guys for watching. Thanks. Bye. Yeah, for sure.